get my my cheat sheet out here so I can <clears throat> so I can get my get on track and find out where we're at here. Uh, hopefully, you've had an opportunity to at least go through the scripture and uh, read Isaiah, and you've been uh, following along with where we're at. And are we good, Clayton? You got us on. Okay. Can you see it? All right. <laughs> we should be good on the uh, recording this time. Hopefully, yeah. We've got. Uh, we finally got our our. Uh, uh, what do you call it? The little card back there, and then Pastor remembered to get that. That's that's the important thing. Pastor needs to remember to get it. And then somebody had, I think it was Scott, had a good idea. So why don't you just get another one? Have a second one on hand. And so we're gonna be double. We're gonna be doubly protected this time. We've got uh, kind of like double mask. I'm just kidding. That's a that's a that's a sensitive subject. Too too soon. Too soon. But uh, anyways, we're gonna have. <laughs> We're going to have two cards on hand, so that way if I happen to forget one at the house, then we got, we got, we got backup. We'll be ready, and uh, Lord willing, uh, this Sunday uh, we'll be on record, and, and uh, we're good. We had it good. We were going to be all systems ago, and then we forgot. We had a, a miscommunication in the little mic thing, and whatever. Lord knows. He knows exactly why, so uh, we, we will have that available, Lord willing, this week, so everybody can... Uh, if you if you choose, you can go back and watch. If you missed something, if you're in Isaiah uh, chapter six, or I'm sorry, chapter thirty-six, then uh, let's read uh, the first couple verses of chapter thirty-six. I want to pray and uh, ask you to uh, ask the Lord to help us. Well, we can get just jump right in. We're going to talk about Hezekiah uh, this morning and uh, a unique uh, situation. That he faced, but let's let's read Isaiah 36. Now it came to pass in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, the Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the defense cities of Judah and took them. And the king of Assyria sent Rabshakeh from Lachish to Jerusalem unto King Hezekiah with a great army. And he stood by the conduit of the upper upper pool, by the in the highway of the fuller's field. Then came forth unto him Eliakim, Hilkiah's son, which was over the house, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah, Asaph's son, the recorder. Kind of set up the, 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 the stage here, if you would. Uh, it's, it's, uh, if you're reading in chronological order, you would actually probably read Isaiah chapter 38 uh, and 9. And Hezekiah gets ill. You'll see that here in a second. That would actually kind of precede these two chapters. Uh, it's kind of unique how it worked out. But the Lord, you know, I don't, not too many people believe that the the actual layout of the of the scripture, as far as chapters and books and all that, were uh, were would would be uh, 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 inspired. In in other words, but the fact that uh, that this took place. <clears throat> You can actually read in uh, uh, Second Kings. I, re I referenced last week also Second Chronicles when it refers to the kings in the uh, uh, the book uh, of uh, the time of Israel. Then you will actually notice this playing out in real time. And I'm going to reference those chapters here in a second. But uh, before we get too far into it, I want you to uh, bow with me in prayer. We're going to ask the Lord to help us as we get into the Bible study this morning. Heavenly Father, uh, I pray that you would just give me clarity of of of, of speech this morning. I uh, <clears throat> my throat feels a lot dry this morning for some reason, so I'm going to try to keep that going. But I pray you'd give me the strength that I need. Uh, Lord, please give me the clarity of thought, clarity of word, clarity of speech. I, I ask that uh, the the hearts of the people, Lord, are prepared to hear from you. Uh, and I know that they did not come to hear uh, me speak, Lord, per se. They came to hear from you. And I know that I need to hear from you this morning. So I pray that you would just give us what we need from the Word of God and challenge us this morning, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, just kind of to, to lay this out for you with Hezekiah, <clears throat> Except for David, King David, and Solomon, uh, no king was actually given more attention in Scripture than Hezekiah. And uh, there's actually 11 chapters in total that are actually devoted to Hezekiah. 2 Kings chapter 18 through 20 speaks about him. 2 Chronicles chapters 29 through 32. And also Isaiah chapters 36 through 39. 
The Bible says in Hezekiah, or I mean, Second Kings, rather. Yeah, Hezekiah. That's a that's a book of the Bible. Did you know that? Anybody ever found Hezekiah in the book of Bible? I'm just kidding. We used to play that joke on people when we would do uh, Bible drills when I was in junior school, you know, and they'd be like, "Okay, Hezekiah chapter three, and you watch people jump down looking for the Bible <laughs> chapter. It's kind of a mean trick to play on somebody who wasn't as familiar. But I fell for it a couple times anyways. But uh, anyways, in the book of 2 Kings, the Bible says he trusted the Lord God of Israel so that after him there was none like him among all the kings of Judah nor any that were before him. His reign began in about 715 B.C. So he may have been a co-regent with his father as early as uh, 729 B.C. But when he took over... Hezekiah took over, he actually restored the temple facilities uh, for the places of worship and uh, also destroyed the idols in the high places. Now, uh, one of the things that's probably unique if you've uh, studied the scripture, study the kings in the Bible, uh, you've no you'll notice as especially uh, that the Bible will say that he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And then it'll say something like this, except for the high places. Right? Uh, many of them just left the high places. Well, it's the high places, Pastor. Well, uh, this was where they would take the false gods. Now, many of these false gods, you know, in our world today, it would be something similar to, uh, like in the Asian realm, they use Buddha. Buddha, they'll have the little Buddha statutes out. Uh, um, also, uh, um, I'm trying to think of uh, other idols that they put out. The, the Catholic priests or the Catholic uh, religion tends to have idols out as well. And you look inside their, uh, uh, I don't know what they call them. Are they churches? Uh, I don't know what they call their, their facilities. But you'll look inside their, their, their area and they all have these different statutes of, of St. Peter and all that. And, and uh, these are actually... Uh, that, so that's an idol. You know, many people pray to them in, in that religion. They believe that uh, they have some kind of status that they can pray to. Uh, but Hezekiah, when he came in as a king, he actually just, just uh, wiped everything out. And he just restored all, all of the worship back to, uh, to, the God, to the God of gods, the Jehovah God. And uh, so he, he, he really sought to bring back vital faith in the Lord. He led the, the people in a nationwide two-week celebration of the Passover. And he even invited the Jews from the northern kingdom to participate. After the fall of the northern kingdom in 722, uh, Judah had constant problems with Assyria, who uh, we've referenced uh, many times already in our study in the book of Isaiah. Assyria was a problem for Judah. <laughs> they came in and destroyed. They actually are, you'll see them even in this study today. Uh, Sennacherib is the, the ruler of, of Assyria, and they're trying to come after Judah uh, and, and, uh, and the king here. But they had constant problems with Assyria. Hezekiah finally rebelled and in uh, 2 Kings chapter 18 you'll read and when Sennacherib threatened to attack Hezekiah actually tried to bribe him with tribute. And of course it was a lapse of faith on Hezekiah's part that God would not bless. But Sennacherib actually accepted the treasures and, and then uh, but he broke the treaty. Now we referenced this last week a little bit. How that uh, Sennacherib had kind of made this treaty with the nation of Israel uh, or rather uh, Judah, and, uh, and then they end up just turning around and, and breaking that treaty. Now, many people believe that the, uh, and I referenced this earlier, but the sickness that Hezekiah, you'll read about in Isaiah, or Hezekiah chapter, I keep saying Hezekiah, Isaiah chapter 38 and 39, you'll read about the sickness that Hezekiah experienced. He was given a death sentence. The prophet Isaiah came to him, and uh, you, you, he doesn't refer, reference it in this chapter or in this book, but in Kings, you'll read that the prophet came to him and said, you're going to die. And Hezekiah turned, he, and re, he turned to the wall, and he prayed, the Bible says, that God would give him extra days. And the Bible says that the sundial went back. I think it was 10 degrees or something like that. But it went back. <laughs> I will actually God actually turned back the time for Hezekiah because he sought God's face. And so they believed that this took place. And then right after that was when Sennacherib came uh, and, and faced the nation of Israel. So I'm just 
trying to lay out a, a little bit of an example of what we're after, what we're looking at, Hezekiah's situation. Uh, we pointed out earlier that, uh, that uh, Ahaz was, he was a very wicked king. Very wicked king. Guess who he was? Hezekiah's dad. And it's interesting to me, I told you my friend of, my, friend of mine is doing a study, he pointed this out, but it's interesting to me as well that, uh, that even, even in the midst of being raised in a wicked home, that someone as great and as, as commendable as Hezekiah could come out of that. In today's society, many people try to, uh, and, and we have to be careful of our, ourselves, right, of trying to push off, well, you know, you just don't know the home I, in, I was raised in. True. And in many cases, that does play a role. But it's not an excuse. God can still use you. That's the great thing about it. No matter what kind of circumstances you're surrounded by, which is also a thing to point out of interest in, in Hezekiah's situation, because the nation of Israel was surrounded by uh, kingdoms like Assyria, Egypt, the Philistines. These were all enemies of God. And so even as a even as a group of people, even as a, as a, as a Christian people, uh, we can look at the society today and we can say, man, it's just getting wicked and wicked and wicked, right? It, it just seems like the decisions that are being made in our government and the decisions that are being made in our, in our public schools and our, our universities and, and the just, it just anti-God. Anybody with me? And we even have churches turning their back on God. And you kind of can sit there in a church on a Sunday morning, Sunday night, whenever you, do, you, you, you attend church, you can sit there and think, man, is there any way that anybody is doing what's right? But here the nation of, of Israel, under, the king, under King Hezekiah's leadership, remained strong. And they continued, regardless of, of the circumstances surrounding them. They were surrounded by wickedness. Sound familiar? And yet they still did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. So I, I come to you today because I want to encourage you on this front. As we go through verse, uh, chapter 36 through chapter 39, you're going to see uh, a nation, what we would call a nation in crisis. Does that sound familiar? Does that not encapsulate the headlines of the news media? Or I saw somebody call it the news Miss Lydia. Uh, the, <laughs> I thought that's funny. That's good. That's good right there. Miss Lydia. Uh, the news media the past couple, of, let's see, year and a half or so. Well, one could make the argument that they've just kind of been misleading people for a long time now. But the, the point is, over the past year or so, crisis there's a crisis now, right? A crisis at the border. Crisis over here. You know, the pandemic, uh, the, the, the COVID crisis, the, the unemployment crisis. You know, we're here all crisis, right? Food shortages and, and this shortage and crisis and crisis. Now, <laughs> we, we, you know, some of that's self-inflicted. But we, let's just try, to, try for a second to understand where Hezekiah is at. They're, they're under attack because they're God's people, right? All of this stuff that we're being, that is, that's being labeled as crisis that we are going through, and I, this is just a matter of my opinion, so if you disagree with me, that's fine, but I'm just saying, uh, I don't think we're in a crisis right now. Uh, a lot of it is, is uh, self-inflicted, and it's kind of the way you look at things, but the truth of the matter is, these people were truly under, in crisis, because here comes the king, Sennacherib, He's coming after Hezekiah and his people. Let's look at what happens here. <clears throat> in verse, three, uh, verse 4, we already read verses 1 through 3. So Rabshakeh, by the way, Rabshakeh and these three uh, leaders, they're, they're, they're great armies, or, excuse me, great leaders in the army. Uh, these people would have been, and I'm trying to find in my notes here what their uh, position would be. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to find it here later, and I, I don't have... Oh, here it is. Uh, so, uh, Tartan was one of the, the leaders that came. That was uh, a name for, if we would call him a supreme commander, okay? Rabsaris would have been a chief officer, and then Rabshakeh, the one who's going to be doing most of the speaking here, is a field commander. 
These are kind of like in today's world, we have lieutenants and general, generals and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, sergeants and so forth. So these were, these were commanders in this army, high-ranking officials that were approaching uh, Hezekiah and the king on this, on this front. Hezekiah sent these, these men out that we re read about, uh, Asa, or I'm sorry, Joah, we also read Helkiah and Eliakim, all right? So these were or Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah. There we go. Uh, God, or Hezekiah sent them out to meet this man. Now watch what happens. Rabshak in verse 4, Say ye now to Hezekiah, Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this wherein thou trustest? I say, thou sayest thou, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. But if thou say to me, we trust in the Lord our God, is it not he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah had taken away and said to Judah and Jerusalem, you, were, you shall worship before this altar. You're going to, and I don't know if I have time to read through all of this, but you're going to see how uh, this leader, Rabshakeh, is mocking God's people. He mocks the decision that Hezekiah made to destroy the high places. He even went so far as to say, well, isn't that your God, the God that you're worshiping? Isn't that his place? Have you ever been in a situation where, you know, I, I, I don't believe that I'm of, of, of great speech, Okay. I don't think that I can just, I'm just very fluent with my words. And you ever met somebody who's just, they're just good with what they say. You know, typically you'll see them on, t on TV, right? They're the ones doing the, the news thing. Or, or maybe they'll do uh, uh, podcasts like uh, TV shows or, or radio shows. Uh, somebody like, a, you know, a Rush Limbaugh who passed away not too long ago. Uh, just good with their words, right? And, uh, you know, this is kind of how I imagine uh, Rab Shaka is. He's real good, real fluent with his words, and, and he's able to just get real pointed with the way he speaks. And, and if you're kind of like me, uh, not as confident in, in, my, in some of my words, that can be a little bit intimidating. So here we see that Ramshaka is just, just going after the, the nation of Israel. He's, he's questioning decisions that, that are being made by this king, by King Hezekiah. King Hezekiah made this decision. He's trying to draw the nation back to God. He, 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 he is literally trying to pull them back into a position of worship, worshiping the holy God, Jehovah God. And here he is trying to question what they're doing. Now watch what he says in verse, uh, verse 9. Now how then... Wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants and put thy trust on chari in Egypt for chariots and horsemen? I, I, missed, I meant to read verse 8. Now therefore give pledges, I pray thee, to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give thee 2,000 horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. So he's saying, hey, look, if you're able, if you're even able, let's find out, I'll give you 2,000 horses. If you can find somebody to ride on them to fight. He's kind of challenging them, in a sense. I want you to uh, skip over to, uh, let's see here, verse, chapter 37, verse uh, 33. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shields, nor cast a bank against it, by the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into this city, saith the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Then, watch this, verse 36, the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians, watch this, a hundred and fourscore and five thousand, a hundred and eighty-five thousand soldiers. One angel. <laughs> Here's Sennacherib saying, hey, go, or, uh, 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 Rab Shack is saying, hey, go ahead. Hey, I'll give you, you 2,000 of my horses. You find somebody to let, uh, fight against one of my guys. And, and God says, okay, that's all right. I'll take one. I'll take one angel and we'll, we'll take care of the whole thing. And, uh, and he says, and, and, and when they rose early in the morning, behold, they were all, watch this, dead corpses. Sometimes scripture gets pretty pointed and blatant, doesn't it? 
<laughs> drew a, a, quite a picture there. Here is the, the, the over here in, in chapter 36, we see this, this, this commander saying, hey, I'm going to give you, go ahead, if you could put 2,000 of your best guys on here, we'll take you out. And Jesus, uh, God says, no, I got this. I got one, one angel right here is going to wipe out 185,000 of them. And in the morning, when they woke up, there was a, they were all dead corpses. So they're facing this crisis, right? I'm trying to draw a picture for you here because I'm wondering, uh, I wanted to uh, kind of bring this up. Let's see if I can get this up here on my, on my presentation. Is that it? There you go. All right. How many of you like equations? You good with math? Me neither. But this is a this is a, a, a an equation, uh, kind of a success equation, if you would. That uh, one of a, a successful football coach, and it wasn't original to him, but he used it uh, at uh, Ohio State football. Uh, brother, uh, his name was uh, Urban Meyer, and uh, many of you may have, if you follow college football. Uh, he led their team to a couple national championships. Very successful. Well, he used this, uh, this equation when dealing with his, his uh, players. The event, the e, e plus O equals R, or E plus R equals O. So event plus your reaction, and I put or response, equals the outcome. All right? So it, it, what he would say is that, and, and this, again, was not original to him, but he says, we have no control over the event, all right? There has, plus your reaction, now that is in our control to an extent. Or I put response, which is actually something that's predetermined. So the difference here is the reaction, all right? So <clears throat> the event happens, and the reaction would be hurt, displeasure, Disappointment, uh, discouragement, anger, uh, you know, depression, right? Th these are the reactions that take place. And if that's how we respond to the event, then it will naturally equal the outcome. For example, if a person holds on to, to something, some type of unforgiveness the Bible talks about, then it will just become a root of bitterness that springs up in us. Years down the road. It may not happen right then and there, but it'll be a root of bitterness that will spring up and, and bring destruction in your life. That's a scriptural example. But here's what, here's what I wanted you to kind of see that for a second because this is, it, it somehow plays into, or not somehow, but it plays and kind of correlates with exactly what happened with Hezekiah and his people. There was this event. You would think that as you read through this scripture, here's Hezekiah taking God's people and uh, they, had, they had just come out of this, this wicked time in their life, right? His own father was a wicked king. And, and uh, Hezekiah comes in and he cleans house. Imagine, if you would, all right? Imagine, if you would, in today's world, that you came in to Cottonwood Baptist Church and there was, uh, and, and, and I haven't helped the thought here, but, but uh, there was a, a, a stripper pole in here and there's somebody over here doing, uh, you know, dealing drugs and, and they got, they're selling uh, adult magazines over here. Can you imagine what would go through your mind? And that's exactly what's taking place in, 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 in the temples. They had turned to wickedness. They were, they were absolutely uh, going towards the false gods. And, and they had ripped away all of the, 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 the idol or the altars and all of the things that were meant to be in the temple. And we understand that this place is a, you know, it's a sacred place. It's set aside for us to come and worship the Lord and, and hear the preaching of the Word of God. And so when you try to draw that in your mind, then you try to now understand what is taking place as Hezekiah cleans house. He rips out all of that wickedness and he restores the temple back to what it was originally intended to be, what God intended for it to be. So you would think, right? Anybody with me on this one? You would think that there would be blessings naturally that follow. Not some kind of invasion by the enemies of God? Anybody with me on that? My God, I've done everything right. I mean, I've, I've, I've prayed. 
I've, I've, the Bible even talks about fasting. I've, I've sought your face. I've, I, I've been faithful to church. I've, I've read my Bible pretty faithfully. I've, I've, I've been trying the best I can to just cut all this nonsense out of my life. And why am I still facing hardships and tribulations and trials? Anybody ever been there? You might be there right now. That's the event. I don't know what event you're facing or you have faced but let me encourage you, because here's what happened with Isaiah, or I mean with Hezekiah. Read on, read down in th chapter 36, verse 20. Well, let's, let's, let's read verse 17, okay? Until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards. This is still uh, 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 Rabshakeh speaking. Beware, lest Hezekiah persuade you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Have any of the gods of this nation delivered this land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? He's mocking them still. Where are the gods of Hamath and Arphad? Where are the gods of Sepharvim? And have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? He's, he's, he's arrogant. He's confident. He's, he's, he's just pushing it in their face, isn't he? He's rubbing it in their face. Who are they, verse 20, among all the gods of these lands that they have delivered, excuse me, that have delivered their land out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? Now, if somebody's coming to you with that kind of a question, and they came up to you and says, well, your God can't do nothing, you know? And, and if it's in me, well, brother, you don't know the God I know. I mean, that's my response. Like, you don't know who I'm talking. You know, I serve a God who is great and mighty and powerful. That would be my response. But what, here's what happened. Watch this. Verse 21. But they held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was saying, answer him not. That's the response. It wasn't a reaction. It was a response. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference. Our reaction, sometimes we can, we can react, and then the outcome isn't so good. But the response, it's planned, it's determined, it's purposed. Dear people, as you are facing, we don't know what kind of events are going to happen, okay, in your life. You, you are here today at church and you have set aside, you've carved out an hour or two of your day to, to, to be here and, and study the Word of God and hear the preaching of the Word of God and sing songs to praise to the Lord and, and you've done that. But hey, it may be that you go home and your face smack dab with some kind of a situation, an event that you're like, good night, man. God, I was just at church. And you're going to, really? You're going to drop this in my lap? What is your response going to be? Will it be a reaction? Or will it be a response? Now in this situation, Hezekiah particularly, specifically said, don't answer him. Now, <laughs> have you ever been there? You ever watched this take place? Maybe the bully at school. Let's just draw a picture here with a bully at school and he's just downgrading you and he's just... Rah, 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 rah. And, and, and have you ever watched that, that kid that was being bullied or, 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 or rustled around or whatever and, and he may be being derated or something like that. Have you ever watched him just sit there and look at him? Not even faced? That's kind of what I see in this, in this, pic in this picture here. Rav Shaka just absolutely going after God, talking about how he, I mean, he can't deliver you. All these gods haven't done it. So what do you think, what makes you think your God's going to do it? I mean, you're, you're, he just went and took and destroyed all the, t the places for him. And, and uh, you know, he just, read it, so read it this week. Isaiah 36, just read through and see what, how, how he was just speaking uh, negatively against their God. And they were supposed to just sit there and take it. Quiet. You know, sometimes, by the way, sometimes the best action is no action. You ever been there? Man, it's not too long ago my wife and I were in a situation like that. And I was ready, man. I had the text message. I mean, we were just typing away. My wife and I both. We were just, you know, we're going to answer this person. You know. But you know what? You know what we did? Nothing. Because, thankfully, in this situation, I'm not saying I've 
we've not all arrived, okay? Anybody with me? If we had arrived, we'd, be, we'd have arrived, but uh, we haven't arrived. But the Bible, you know, thankfully, her and I had the presence of mind, by God's grace, to just stop before we hit the little send button on the text message and just say, nah, we're not going to say that. Now, there have been times on the other side of it, and I'm just giving them their mind. And man, if everybody, if you, if you rallied the troops around you, man, you would read that to everybody around the text. Would be like, yeah, you give it to them. And, and that would be exactly what you need to say in that. And, and man, if I were you, I would say this. And, but you know what? What is, the, what is the outcome of that? So the reaction doesn't think about the outcome. The response thinks about the outcome. So... Watch what happens as we read now in verse, or in chapter 37, or let's read in 32 and we'll kind of read in. Then Eliakim, obviously he was one that was there receiving this, this word from Rabshakeh, the son of Hilkiah that was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joah the son of Asaph the recorder, to, to Hezekiah with their clothes rent and told the words of Rabshakeh. So we're going to kind of bleed now into chapter 37. And it came to pass when the king Hezekiah heard it that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went to the house of the Lord. This, by the way, was a, a statement when a king would take his clothes, or these kingly clothes, just, just royal robe, you know, all of that garments. And when they would actually rip their clothes and rent their clothes and, and then put on sackcloth, that made a statement to the nation. He's, he's mourning. There's, there's something that's bothering him. And when Hezekiah got word, and, and here, here it was, so you, you, you read here that, that he had a recorder with him, and this guy's sitting there typing everything out. You know, he's got his phone. and his, This was back before voice recordings, you know? So he could just sit there and record the guy while he was sitting there just spewing off all this nonsense about God. And this recorder came and he brought all that word. Of course, these guys, were, they were, man, they were sad. The Bible says they came in sackcloth. They were like, King, you, you just don't understand. This is what he said. And he sent Eliakim, verse 20, or verse 2, Eliakim, who was over the household, and, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, unto Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, this day is a day of trouble, of rebuke. And of blasphemy, for the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It may be the Lord thy God will hear the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, his master hath sent uh, to reproach the living God, and, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servants of king Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard, wherewith the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him, and he shall hear a rumor and return it to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Now, prophecy, uh, you know, spoiler alert, but whenever Sennacherib ends up going back, guess what? He got, he got assassinated by his own kid. So he went, came, brought this message to Hezekiah, blaspheming God, bringing this, this message of, of hate and distrust and dishonor to, to the people of God. And God said, hey, just, you know what, chill. <laughs> He's going to go back to his own land, and guess what? His own people are going to rise up against him and kill him. But I wonder, let's just speak hypothetically here, what if they would have re reacted do you think they would have seen, I mean, if it were me, I'd have taken, you know, like you see in the movie, like Peter style, and just take my sword out and just, swipe, you know, just swipe him away. Huh? Anybody else feel that way about our God? When somebody's just, I mean, they're just downgrading God. Very few people I've talked to that just have the gall to speak that way about God. Anybody ever experienced that? Kind of makes you tremble a little bit, doesn't it? When they're literally just speaking against God. I mean, you just want to just reach out and choke them. <laughs> but the best response here was nothing. And here, let's, let's keep reading. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he was departed from Lachish. 
And he heard say concerning Tirhaka, king of Ethiopia, he has come forth to make war. So this is kind of a little uh, brief here. You see the uh, paragraph break in, in, in there that's, that's notated in, in verse 8. Look at verse 14. And Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up unto the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed unto the Lord. Do you see what his response is? His response was already pre-planned. He told the guys, hey, don't say anything. All I want you to do is you take, the, you take the message, bring it back to me. They come back in sackcloth and ashes. I'm sure they felt degrade, degraded and berated. They're like, oh my goodness, can you just, I can't even understand why he would be able to say such things. I mean, why wouldn't God just rip his tongue out of his mouth? I know that's in the Hebrew. I know it's not there, but that's what I read. <laughs> now, why wouldn't God just rip his tongue out of his mouth and just smite him right there? I mean, didn't you see what happened to Korah and all those people when they were rising up against Moses and the ground opened up and swallowed them whole? I mean, the whole people. Why wouldn't he do that to this guy? And I can't imagine what the, 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 the just the hurt and, the, and just the, the, the pain that maybe they were experiencing when they came back to Hezekiah with this message and Hezekiah's response was, hey, you know what? Take this to the prophet. Take this to the prophet. And I want to know what he has to say. That's a pretty wise decision, by the way, isn't it? Let's go to God. Let's see what he has to say. Let's find out what God has to say on this matter. And, Hezekiah, and, and I, the, the message from Isaiah, the prophet, was, hey, you know what, just... <laughs> In the Hebrew again, take a chill pill. He's going to go back to his own country and they're going to take him out. He's got his coming. You just pray to God. And, I, and Hezekiah does that. Read, read his prayer. Oh, Lord God. Or excuse me. Oh, Lord of hosts. God of Israel that dwellest between the cherubims. Thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Incline thine ear, O Lord, and hear. Open thine eyes, O Lord, and see and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he hath sent to reproach the living God. Of a truth, O Lord, uh, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their countries. In other words, God, I mean, they, these, this is a powerful nation. If they really wanted to, they could wipe us out. I mean, they've got a pretty good track record. And, and they've cast their gods into the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they've destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. Now, an interesting uh, just side note here. And I'm going to get back to my, uh, my notes so I can make sure I got this, this, this uh, pulled up here. <clears throat> But this, this is reminiscent or fast-forwarding, if you would, to a prayer that was voiced in, in Acts chapter 4. Fast-forwarding to the church, uh, and, and there, here they were, they're praying in verse uh, 24, and when they heard that they lifted up their voice to God with one accord, Lord God, uh, Lord, thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain thing? And here's the prayer of David, right? He's, man, why did they rage? Here's, here's Hezekiah's prayer. Why do they rage? I mean, they're imagining these vain things. And here's the, the, the church in, in, the, in the book of Acts praying. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For... Of a truth against thy holy child, Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and, and, and Pontius Pilate and the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. He says, we're just surrounded by all these people coming after God, coming even after his own son, Jesus. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel be determined, excuse me, uh, thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants uh, bold, that with all boldness they may speak the word by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and, 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 and they spake the word of God with boldness. Hezekiah's prayer. He says, Lord, save us from his hand that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord, even thou only. 
We have a precedent that has already been set in Scripture, uh, dear people of God. That You know what? We don't have to fret when these times come. I don't know what you're facing this week. I don't know what that event is going to be in your life. Maybe it's already happened, and you're just right now dealing with the bitterness and the anger and the frustration and whatever it is. You're, 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 you're kind of in the middle of this event, and you haven't quite reacted or responded. Go to God. He's got the answers. A pastor doesn't have the answers. You know, sometimes by, by the grace of God and, and, and just by, by His leading, leading and wisdom, I can take some Scripture. And, but man, ultimately, we're just going to go to the Scripture. We're going to find out what is the answer to this question here. And sometimes the answer is, well, His ways are higher than ours. Amen. I, I, I don't know. You know, he's got a better reason for this. Amen. This at some point down the road, maybe, we're going to see why. It may be not even in your lifetime. It may be in your children's lifetime that God is doing this so that when they get older, their faith can be bolstered and they can be stronger and see revival in their lives. We don't know. But you could read in, in Isaiah chapter 37 how uh, the, 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 the remnant is, is coming to God and they are, they are praying to God and they're watching this victory take place because in the midst of, of, of an un, unfortunate event, they came to God and they asked Him, what do we do? What do we do, God? I mean, these people... They've got, they've got all the right words, it seems like. They can, they're coming after us. They've, they've just been dis, dis, destroying you in our sight. I mean, they're just like, just totally just erasing everything you've done. We know you're a great God. Can you show yourself strong and mighty to God, to them? Sometimes that's all it takes. Amen. Sometimes you just got to stop. Don't respond. Just Wait. And God will let you know what to do. But our problem sometimes, I fear, is that, you know what, we react. Yeah. Yes, sir. And in the reaction, the negative outcome is maybe a break in relationship. <coughs> That's kind of the, the typical thing that happens. Husband and wife. I'm just, you know, showing a little bit of pastor's humanity. I, I react, it may be in anger towards my wife, and guess what? The relationship now is broken because I reacted. Instead of responding the way the Lord would have in, in love and in respect is what the Bible would tell us to do as a spouse. Or maybe even sometimes just pausing and saying, you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm taking a time out right here. And I'm going to go to the Lord because I need to know how to respond right here. I don't know what it is. Uh, folks, whatever you're facing right now, whatever you are facing or getting ready to face, it's, you know, it is an event. And sometimes, here's the thing, sometimes that event can be good. Let's, let's take it from this angle for a quick minute. Sometimes the event can be good. And do you know what our, our reaction can be? Oh, man, things are good now. <laughs> and we're excited. We're happy. We get lackadaisical in our, our relationship with the Lord. And, man, everything's going good, right? We're blessed. We got good money. Money's flowing into our bank account. And we're good. Uh, I don't need to go to church this Sunday. Or I don't need to get up this morning and read my Bible. Everything's good. Do you think that's the right response to God blessing you? Mm-mm. And, and unfortunately, that's what happens in humanity, is it not? Amen. Humanity is like, man, things are going good. I'm just going to back up here. You know, it's, it's kind of like I heard this, this guy give an analogy the other day about how he, he, went, he was over, way overweight and he needed to lose like four, uh, three, or, uh, three or four, 120 or 130 pounds or something like that. And he went on this deal and man, he was just, just I mean, he was after it. He lost about 100 pounds and he said, then here came Christmas. Anybody know what Christmas is, right? All them sweets. It's good stuff. Them, them, them Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> and they came along and he said, you know what? I was pretty good all year long. I did good. And guess what? He never returned back to that, de that determination and that diet because things were going good. Right? And that's just, 
a, 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 just a small example of how we can become lackadaisical even in a good event. So this goes both ways. We can choose to respond. Okay, Lord, you know what? You have blessed me. Thank you so much for giving me this extra. I mean, maybe it's a, a $500. Maybe it's $1,000. Maybe you get a bonus at work or, or something like that. Instead of reacting and going down to the store and buying all this stuff, why don't you ask the Lord, how can I be a blessing to God's people? How can I uh, use this to be a servant? How can I, Lord, what would, what would honor you with this money? Maybe it's, a, maybe it's a good report on a health uh, screening that you have and, man, you're feeling on top of the world and, 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 man, this is so good, I can just do this or that. Hey, why don't you ask God how He wants you to respond with that good result? Now, naturally, we should say, hey, praise the Lord, right? But what are you going to do with it? Hezekiah got the same, and this is, this is where I'm trying to kind of bring it in because he got that. He got the bad news, right? He got the bad news that he was going to die. Can you imagine? Somebody came, somebody came to you, right? We did today's world. You got cancer. It's a bad diagnosis. You got cancer. You know, six to nine months, right? They'll give, try to give uh, a time frame. Miss Lisa works with uh, cancer people. Am I, am I right on that? And uh, sometimes the, the diagnosis doesn't look good. Man, you get that notice. And, 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 and Hezekiah got this notice, you got, you got, you're done, you're done, man. What was his response? Woe is me. Oh, you know, I just, I just got this bad diagnosis. And everybody would understood, huh? <laughs> you know, the prophet just came and told me, I'm dying. He said, oh man, I feel bad for you, bro. Hey, <laughs> what can we do? You know, we're going to take care of that bucket list, right? <laughs> if I go, uh, you know, give to us, you know, we're going to do a, do a, uh, a crowdfunding thing and uh, we're going to raise a bunch of money so he can go and, and skydive like he's always wanted to because that's, you know, no. Hezekiah said, Lord, Lord, please. Look, I, I, I know you didn't bring me this far because cause you wanted me to just die. I mean, I'm, surely that's not it. But if that's the case, okay. But Lord, would you just grant me some more time and before Isaiah even hit the door? God said, I, you know what? I saw that. Tell Hezekiah he's got 15 more years. And Hezekiah stood up. This is, this is the time that we're reading. He stood up to Sennacherib. He didn't waste it. God's people were delivered. Now, <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is just the, the typical humanity. Even Hezekiah's son turned and did wicked things. His name is Manasseh. Wicked things. He said, man, I, I, are you kidding me? I mean, here's this guy. God blessed this nation. They saw victory. His own son just turns his back, goes almost, and they said, okay, I'm just, just like his, his wicked uh, grandfather did. And you would think, right? Why, God? Why did you grant him this 15 years? I mean, because then, you know, Manasseh would have never been born. That question floats around out there. But do you know who Manasseh's son was? Josiah. And Josiah was another king. He got a hold of the, the, he got a hold of the scrolls. He got a hold of the prophecy. And he started realizing what was going on. And he thought, wait, hold on a second. He's, he's eight, nine, ten years old when he became king. And he had them come in and read that to him. And he said, man, we're way off. I want you to, and he went out and cleaned house as well. All the false prophets, he killed them and ground their bones up. Ground the idols up. And, and scattered it on their graves. Josiah made business too. So before we go to ask, start asking ourselves questions, and before we go to start thinking, well, you know what? I, I just haven't had the right home life, so you know, I'm just destined for it. No. That's not how God works. If you'll just turn your back on, on the things of the world and turn your back on what this world's trying to tell you is you're just your destination because of the way you were raised or because of your home life or, uh, or because of a bad situation at, 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 at work or, or a bad uh, health uh, analysis or whatever the case may be, you know what? You can still turn to God and you can still trust Him and you can still see God bring victory in your life. And though we don't understand 
humanly speaking, why God would bring a Manasseh in after all of this good thing. Why wouldn't God just, why wouldn't he just keep the good going? Why wouldn't he just keep the flow going, huh? I don't know if anybody else with me on that one. Amen. Kind of just makes sense. But somehow God allowed it to happen. And we can't question that. <laughs> Sometimes we're like, well, that's, not, that's why I don't, want to, I don't want to worship a God like that. God has a reason for it. But we have to trust Him. So I don't know where you're at on this spectrum. I think I still got it up there. Are you, are you, are you in the event right now? Whether it's negative or positive. The Holy Spirit probably, I, I guarantee you right now, Holy Spirit, if you're listening, He's pointing out maybe one or two events, maybe three, maybe a handful of events, maybe just one big event that's going on right now or that has happened and you have either reacted or you are responding. Whether it's negative or positive. And understand that the outcome, right? That We don't really have any direct control over that. It, it is a result of our reaction or our response. If I fly off the handle at my son because he does something that displeases me, you know, I could damage his, his will and, and, and his spirit, you know. He, he, he might be, you know, a little bit apprehensive around daddy. That's not what I want. <laughs> I could get mad at him and angry at him and fly off the handle and abuse him. And he's going to carry that with him, Vony. We see that all over. But the same thing can apply if I do that to Clayton now. Now Clayton can decide, you know what? Dad was, you know, he's kind of a jerk. Because I would be, by the way, if I did that. But he can decide, God, how would you like me to use this? And we can look around this country and there are camps all over the place where people were given a bad situation and they took it and turned it into good to minister to people with that kind of a need. There are, there are organizations out there because, you know, somebody had a bad event happen in their life. You go to Walmart right now and on the little door you'll see a little star that says Code Adam. Anybody ever seen that? Code Adam because uh, Walsh, Adam Walsh was, was kidnapped at a Walmart one time. And do you know what happened? That guy, and though his, his, they never found him. He made us a, 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 a sour situation. And he went after. And he, he created an organization now that, that helps try to re, 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 retrieve uh, lost children. Some have been found, some have not. Many people have been brought to justice, many have not. But it's an organization that was started as a result of a father and a mother. It hurt. Can you imagine? Oh, man, I can't imagine. You, you were at a Walmart or something like that, and your child came up missing. Right? Just a panic and the, just, just that right there. But he turned that into good. So I don't know where you're at, folks. I really don't. As your pastor, I want you to know I love you. And I'm praying for, for everybody. I want you to do what's right. I want you to make the right, uh, re right decisions. But I can tell you this, we got the precedent in Scripture. Just go to God. Go to the Lord. And ask Him, what, what should my response be right now? Sometimes you just need to be still. Sometimes you need to, re you need to respond right away. But if you don't go to the Lord, you won't know what that is. Let's pray.